Around Australia, one of the most popular weekend entertaining dishes has always been a good old pot pie. And why not? It's pretty easy. But while you might be used to a chicken pot pie, I'm here to tell you there's something that's even tastier and better for you. These portions are around 140 grams each, which means what you end up with is perfect for making each person's pie. To make four of those, of course, we'll need four fillets. Just dice them up in around two centimetre cubes and then set them aside just for the minute. Onto the salmon, I'm just going to add a little bit of finely grated lemon zest, like two lemons worth should just about do it, and also the juice. Now, if you've done any cooking over the years, you probably think to yourself, crazy man, what's he doing? Can't put lemon juice on a fish, it'll cook it. Well, it does, and that's also OK, because, remember, we're going to bake this in, like, a creamy sauce. As for the rest of your pot pie, it's actually, oh, maracas, one of the <laughs> easiest recipes you're ever going to make because it's actually only got three steps going on. You've got to make the base, then the sauce, then pop it in a tin and bake it. For that base, you'll need a couple of leeks and we'll just chop those down. We don't want the green bit. Also, do make sure you check the leeks to make sure they're not dirty. No, they're absolutely perfect, actually. So, we'll chop those down and fry it off with a little bit of olives, uh, some capers and some garlic, just a little bit of butter. Believe it or not, the trick is not to cook down the leeks too far, otherwise you're going to lose their amazing flavour. But if that's the base, how do you turn it into a sauce? For that, you're going to need just a little bit of flour and some liquid. This here is some chicken stock, but I've got one other liquid that's... Ah, it's a little bit of a secret. Sprinkle in the flour, and that's going to need to cook for, well, no more than a minute, just till it starts to catch on the bottom of the saucepan, and then we'll pour in the chicken stock. It actually works really well. Now, this is cream of asparagus, so old-fashioned, but still absolutely brilliant. Once it mixes with all these other liquids, it gets to that perfect soup consistency. But if you want to have a creamy result, you want to add something dairy as well. And I reckon there's nothing better than creme fraiche. Don't go with sour cream, because it will split. As soon as that has been stirred through, you can set it aside. It's really important to make sure that this sauce cools down a bit before we go any further, because otherwise, when we bake it later, the pastry wouldn't go crisp. So, at this point, we can take our salmon and drain off the liquid, pop it in with the sauce. Plus, for an extra vegetable, well, I've just steamed some potatoes. They're pretty good. We'll stir them in as well. OK, gently stir this together. You don't want to crush either the salmon or the potatoes. And look, it's good, but I, I'm just thinking it probably needs a splash of colour. Maybe some chopped parsley so it looks fresh and lovely. Once that's done, I want to show you two tricks you need to know about baking a pot pie. The first thing you need to know is, no matter how generous you might be feeling, don't overfill the pots. Because if the mixture's too high, it's going to sit up against the pastry we're about to put on, and then it can never go crisp. It's absolutely impossible. So make sure you leave about a half centimetre gap at least at the top. Once that's done, we'll grab the pastry. Have I become invisible? Store-bought puff pastry is absolutely fine. You just need to cut it slightly larger than the tin that you're using. I'm going to use this great little star-shaped cutter, like so. When you're making a pot pie, well, the steam has to have somewhere to go. Make sure you pinch the sides just to ensure that it's sealed properly. Then a little bit more egg over the top. <laughs> 
Now, to bake these, you need to start in a hot oven at least 200 degrees so the puff pastry really gets that good start. And they'll need about 20, maybe 25 minutes. You'll know they're done because they get puffy and golden and crisp. I'm sure you've seen this before. Well, that smells amazing. Less than half an hour later, it is a brilliant way to reinvent the classic pot pie. Easy ingredients. Best of all, it comes straight from the family who produces this salmon down in Tasmania, straight to your family dinner table.